Okay, on the last lesson, we talked about angles involving chords and secants. Just to review that really quick, if I'm talking about the angle, once again, the angle is the space between these two lines. If this is a um, 50 degree angle there, and I knew that this was a 60 degree angle there, I could find the angle of this arc. So one arc is 60 degrees, and the other arc is X degrees and I know the intersecting angle of the chords is 50. If it's an angle on the inside, I use addition, and I divide by two to find the average of those, so that would be 60 plus X equals 100, and X equals 40. That's what I was doing for angles. So, uh, and, but today, we're not going to be talking about the angles, we're gonna be talking about the segments. So, I'm gonna erase what we have there from that quick review, and we'll look at these segments together. Basically, these segments are the little pieces of the chord. So I have, well, let's say, one piece here, AE, and another piece here, EC, and I have a piece here, BE, and a piece here, DE. Uh, well, if I multiply these segments, so if this is two, and this is four, if this was, three, I could find out what this was. And here's what I mean. When I have chords, you can almost see the chords make an X a lot of times. They make an X, so that reminds us that it multiplies. So I do two times four should be equal to three times X. So eight would be equal to three X, divide by three. So X would be equal to eight thirds or about 2.8. Uh, six repeating. So eight thirds or 2.6 repeating would be this length. Now it does make sense that um, just looking at the diagram, you can tell that that is in the neighborhood of two or three. It's not quite as long as the four. So if your diagram is drawn to scale, once again, use common sense as you set these up. But that's actually one of the easier problems if you're setting it up with multiplication. Um, let's go ahead and look at one more thing on the secant angles though. Secants, uh, yesterday, we, our last lesson, we were talking about if this is 20 degrees and this is, let's say, 120 degrees, I can use those to find this angle over here. So in this case, I take my big angle and my little angle, and then that's going to give me this angle here, which we'll call X. And I always divide by two when I'm dealing with these angles uh, from two different arcs. But since it's an outside angle, I subtract. With the outside angle, I would have subtracted and that would have given me 100 divided by two or 50. So that's just reviewing the last lesson very quickly. But I want you to notice again, we are not looking at the arcs and the angles here, uh, we're gonna be looking at the segments. So let's erase what we have there and let me show you the segments we're talking about. I have this segment here, which I'll have BC, and I'll have this segment over here, which I will have CE, and then I have this segment over here, which is ED, and this segment over here, which is AD. So I have different little pieces. And what we are actually going to be looking at for this one is the length of the entire thing. So B to E and the length of the entire thing A to E. So I've got several different pieces of information here. Let me show you how this is going to work. If I know this entire purple distance is 10, and I know CE is, let's say, 4. If that's 10 and this is 4, and let's say DE is a little bit smaller, it's 3. I can say what is the value of this long piece here? What is the value of this piece that goes from A to E? Well, the rule I'm gonna do here for the ones that intersect inside, I just multiply the two pieces that come from the same line. For the one outside, what I like to think of it is it's the nose times the hole. And here's what I mean. The nose is the little pointy part of this thing here. So the nose part of this first line is four times the whole part of that line was the whole 10. Not the blue part inside the circle, but the whole part. So it's the nose times the whole is going to equal 
the nose times the hole. In this case, we don't know the whole thing. The whole thing is X, that's what we're looking, but we do know that the nose piece here is three. So four times 10 equals three times X. We'll go ahead and solve. 40 will be three X. And then X is going to be 40 divided by three, which is about 13.3. So notice, that since this piece was a little shorter, it had to stretch a little further across the circle. So as this piece gets shorter, it makes sense that the entire length is going to get longer to stretch and make that way across the circle. I know these can take a little getting used to, so we're going to work a couple more examples together. These are actually a lot like the ones on 279. Um, one example is I have a piece here, I'm going to call it x and, and x plus 1 for this uh, length, and I'm going to have 6 and 5 for this one. Since they meet on the inside, I just multiply their two pieces, so what I'm going to have is x times x plus 1 is equal to 5 times 6. And since it's multiplying, it makes no difference which one you put first and last. You might be able to guess and test and come up with the answer, but to solve this the quote unquote right way, I would need to multiply that x through, distribute it through the parentheses, x squared plus x, multiply five times six, that's 30. Since I have an x squared and an x, I cannot combine them together. They're not like terms, so the best way to solve this quadratic is to get everything on one side. We've talked about that several times before. Once everything's on one side, I have my option of graphing it in Desmos and looking for x-intercepts using quadratic formula or factoring. I'm going to choose factoring. I'm looking for something that multiplies to uh, 30 and adds to 1. So that's going to be the number 6 and 5. And since it's a plus 1 there, I would have to have a positive 6 and a negative 5. Now it is factored, so I'm looking for what would make what value would make this parenthesis be zero? So that parenthesis would be zero if x equals six. The other parenthesis would be equal to zero if x was five. So I have two possible answers of negative six and five. The negative six will not work in this problem because I can't have a negative value for AE. And if I let x be negative six, it's not that in a geometry problem that x can't be negative at me, it's that if you plug it in, none of the segments can be negative. So that doesn't make any sense in the context of this problem. Five would be the answer. And like I said, you probably could have figured it out. Uh, you know, if I would have tried three times four, I'm like, that wouldn't have worked. I should have been able to say, hey, five times six will equal five times six because the numbers are one apart. But we worked it with the algebra just in case you ran across a tougher one. Um, I'm going to go ahead and skip down to number three on this page. I'll let you try two on your own. Uh, when I try number three, it's secant angles. I'm going to get rid of uh, our old work and um, maybe move the diagram just a little bit so it looks a little bit more like what is on your page. And it tells you that this piece here, we're going to get a different color, is x plus three. And then this piece over here is a two. And this is a one. And this is an x plus two. Now the tricky thing to remember about this is that when I have these external angles, I have to do the nose times the hole. One thing I do to remember that is I think what part of your face, uh, and the nose is a very outside part of your face. It's a part of your face that sticks out some. So if the angle is on the outside, if I have one of these with the pointy out sticking out part that kind of looks like a nose, see if this was a man, there he is with an eye on the side of his head. And there he is with the mouth, and there's his big long nose. But anyway, we'll get rid of those last couple marks. We don't need to confuse anybody, but I kind of think it looks like a nose, maybe like on Jack in the Box or something. So if I have a nose times the hole, I know my nose piece here is two, but they did not give me my whole piece. They gave me this as x plus three, but I have to take time to find out my whole piece. If I do x plus three plus two, that whole piece is equal to x plus 5. So that's what I'm going to need to use for the whole on this one. On this one, the whole piece would be an x plus 2 plus 1 more, which would be an x plus 3. So when I set up this equation, I'm actually going to need to set it up this way, that I have the nose piece. So of the top piece, it's the nose is 2, and the whole length is x plus 5. 
And on the bottom piece, the nose is x plus 2, and the whole length is x plus 3. Now, once again, these can sometimes be guilty of requiring a little bit of algebra, so let's go ahead and work our way through this. If I distribute the 2 through, I will have 2x plus 10. And then on the other side, I need to do x times x is x squared. x times 3 is 3x. 2 times x is another 2x. And then 2 times 3 is 6. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and combine like terms. So I have 2x plus 10 equals x squared plus 5x plus 6. Unfortunately, I still have an x squared. It's not going to cancel out, so I'm going to need to get everything on one side. So I'm going to be subtracting the 2x from both sides and subtracting the 10 from both sides. So that's going to give me an x squared. And when I do 5x minus 2x, that's going to give me a 3x because I have to subtract 2x over there. I also have to subtract it from 5x. And then I have a 6 minus 10 is going to be a minus 4. And then it'll be equal to 0. The good news is once you get that equal to 0, you could graph that in Desmos and uh, look for some x-intercepts or you could use quadratic formula. Or once again, I'm going to factor. So I need things that multiply to 4 and add to 3. The numbers that do that are 4 and 1. And to make it a positive 3, I need a plus 4 and a minus 1. Then uh, I say, what makes this parenthesis be 0? Well, if x was negative 4, negative 4 plus 4 would be 0. What makes the other one be 0? A positive 1. And then once again, since x, if I tried to plug in a negative 4, you notice I would have for that length there, negative 4 plus 2 would not work. So that is not an acceptable answer. My only acceptable answer is 1. Usually negative values for x don't work, but you do have to take the time to plug it back into the problem and see. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and clear this and set up number 4 because it looks different, but it's actually the same as what we just did. If you want to try it on your own, you can, or you can work it with me. Now, I have intentionally left this one a little bit different than what's in the book because I want to illustrate something as I finish this diagram. But first, this piece here is 5. This piece here is x plus 1. And it's an external angle, an external intersection, so I need to be using my nose times the whole piece because it's the sticky out part right there. I can see it has a nose. So the nose times the whole thing is the rule I'm going to use. And on this side, I can tell that the whole thing is awful close to uh, x plus 4. So I can tell my nose piece is x minus 1. And my whole piece is x plus 4 on that side. But we need to talk about the nose and the hole on the other side. Right now, you can very clearly, most of you might say, hey, there's your nose and there's the whole piece. And I don't disagree with that, but here's what I want to show you. All that's going to change as I, if I were to slide that point C along, and that point uh, so that it gets closer and closer to B, all that's going to change there, and I'll redo my diagram a little bit so y'all hopefully So, uh, as we look at this diagram, what happened is as I slid C closer to B, it basically made uh, that instead of being a secant line, it made it be a tangent line as they got closer. And I noticed that the nose pretty much became equal to the whole thing. So on this one side, the whole thing is a nose. So not only is a, the nose x plus 1, but the whole length is x plus 1. So anytime you have one of the pieces that is a tangent, the whole thing is a nose. So what I can do is I can say, uh, once again, that x plus 4, the, um, the nose, I'm sorry, is x minus 1, times the whole thing is x plus 4. That's the piece on the right. And then on the other piece, actually, let me write that a little bit different. 
I'm going to put the piece on the right, on the right side of the screen. Maybe that'll help somebody. So I have the nose, which is X minus one times the whole thing on the right. And then on the other side, the nose, the blue piece is X plus one. And the whole thing is also X plus one. So when I have that tangent line, since the nose equals the whole thing, I'm going to have the same parenthesis twice. Now that still needs to be multiplied out. So that's X squared plus X plus X plus one. And on this side, this is X squared plus four X minus one X minus four. And now I'll put some like terms together. That's supposed to be a 2x. So I have x squared plus 2x plus 1. On this side, put some like terms together. x squared plus 3x minus 4. And then these two things are actually equal to each other. It's true that this statement I've underlined here is equal to this statement here. The good news is, since they both have an x squared, I can cancel out the x squared from both sides by subtracting x squared. So I'm left with a 2x plus 1 equals 3x minus 4. So this one, although it was ugly at the beginning, the fact that the x squared went away makes it linear, which is nice at the end. Subtract the 2x, so it cancels over there. Add the 4, so it cancels over there on the right side. And I have 5 is equal to x, so x is equal to 5. And if you think about it, that is a reasonable answer because it means if x is 5, this piece is 6, this piece is 4, and then this whole thing over there, and then that would be five as well. So I have a six length there and a four and a five for a total of nine. So very reasonable uh, estimates based on what we see in the problem. So that's how you can set those up. Just be careful for the one where the whole thing is a nose like we have right here that I'm highlighting in yellow one more time. If the whole thing is a nose, I just do the nose times the whole thing still, but the, uh, but the two parentheses will match. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions, and uh, good luck on these problems.